on my own behalf. My name is Aloy Ejimako. I'm the special counsel to Mazin Namdekano and the indigenous people of Biafra. And I'm speaking to you from a location in Nigeria. The man, Mazin Namdekano, is well known. He's everywhere. He's on Wikipedia. He's an internationally acclaimed freedom fighter. But there are just a few things I need to tell you about him. What brought him to limelight was the formation of the indigenous people of Biafra in the United Kingdom in 2012. Simultaneously, he also founded Radio Biafra. And these two organizations were aimed at one thing, liberation for the people of Biafra or restoration of the former Republic of Biafra that went defunct in 1970. The right to self-determination is a right that is guaranteed internationally, domestically, and continentally. It's within the black letters of Nigerian law at Article 20 of the African Charter on Human and People's Rights. The right to self-determination is guaranteed. So the formation of IPOV did not break any law. Not laws of the United Kingdom, not international law, not Nigerian law. But guess what? When Mazin Namdekano, who was born in Nigeria, but who acquired British citizenship later on, came to Nigeria in October 2015, the government of President Muhammadu Buhari, which had come to power in May, decided to arrest him. He was not arrested between 2012 and 2015 because the government of the day at that time understood that self determination. It's not a crime, but the government that came into power in 2015 in May decided that safe determination is going to be treated as a criminal activity. So he was arrested in Lagos. He was charged for treason, also for insulting the president and illegal importation of ready equipment. Three charges. The treason one, they split it into two, treason by himself and treason by conspiracy. This thing went on from 2015 until April 2017, when he was eventually granted bail. So he was detained for nearly 18 months. After granting him bail, he returned to his ancestral home in the southeastern part of Nigeria, and he was enjoying his bail when suddenly. Between 10 September and 14 September 2017, the Nigerian army, without any justification whatsoever, levied little massive military operations against Mazen Namdekano's ancestral home. That day, he was sitting at home with, a couple, with, with so many people, his family members, including his two elderly parents. The attack was lightning, it was a bleak ridge, it was massive, and it was not the type of an attack you would expect a national military force to levy on a civilian location. But they did. At the end of the day, 28 people lost their lives. Mazin Namdekano sustained injuries, his parents sustained injuries as well, but somehow, by the grace of God, they all managed to escape. From there, the rest is history. And because there was a national and international manhunt for him by the security forces, which rules of engagement was to shoot, not to maim. If you see Namdekan, if you encounter him anywhere, shoot not to maim. Not to maim, but shoot to kill. That's what they want there to do on 10 September, but they didn't succeed. But it went on. They went on in a manhole. So Namdekan was forced to flee the municipal boundaries of Nigeria in search of safe heaven overseas. When Namdekan was abducted on 19th June 2021, the proper thing that should have been done is to take him to a police station, from there to a court. And then if you wanted him back in Nigeria, you subject him to what is called extradition proceedings. This is a basic tenet of the law that you see 
in the laws of any, in, of any nation. Kenya has an extradition act to which Mazin Nam de Kano should have been subjected. But guess what? They didn't do that. They rather disappeared him for eight days, tortured him to their heart's content. And on 27th June, they secretly brought him out from this location and took him through the back doors, evading Kenyan immigration direct to the tarmac of Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, Nairobi, where a private plane was waiting. They bundled him into the plane, chained him to the chair, and everything. He endured five, six hours flight from Nairobi uh, to Kenya in the most excruciating circumstances. They arrived in Nigeria late in the evening and the plane flew back to Nairobi. Uh, they took him to the headquarters of the National Intelligence Agency in Abuja where he spent the first night with all the lights left on to assure his maximum discomfort. The following day, they transferred him to the headquarters of Director of State Security in Abuja. And on the third day, they brought him before the Federal High Court in Abuja. The Federal High Court was well aware that Mazin Nandekano has counsel of record it was an open case, it wasn't a new case, a pre-existing case. But the Federal High Court decided to conduct the arraignment in violation of his constitutional right to counsel. And that arraignment led to the indefinite detention with which we are struggling today. So why his criminal trial was making its way slowly at Abuja, with all the several amendments the government was bringing, they walked away from treasonable felony, insulting the president, importation of radio equipment, and bam, to terrorism. That's how it happened, and they did this seven times, seven amendments. They just want to get as many years of jail time out of him as possible, because they know that with the evidence available, conviction will be impossible. And that was made worse by the extraordinary rendition, which I took also as a civil violation to a federal high court in Nigeria. And in October 2022, the federal high court came down with a judgment that extraordinary rendition was a violation of his constitutional rights, his fundamental rights, and they awarded him 500 million Nigerian Naira. That's about $800,000. So all around, everywhere that this matter has gone to, including in July 2022, before the um, Human Rights Council at the United Nations, the Human Rights Council United Nations came down with an opinion that what happened to Mazin Namdekano in Kenya and that brought him to Nigeria is a very grave violation of international law and they directed that he should be released unconditionally. Mazin Namdekano is a poster boy for the, all the injustices that a great race, the Igbo people, and their cousins in the former Eastern Nigeria have been subjected to since the founding of Nigeria. These injustices became more um, public because since 2015 they have been escalated. I thank you profusely and I ask you to, when you leave Washington Press Club today, I want you to speak up for Biafrans, speak against their persecution, speak up for the unconditional release of Mazin Namdekano, and may God bless you for that. Again, my name is Aloy Ejimako, Special Counsel to Mazin Namdekano, speaking to you today, May 25th, 2023. 
Thank you very much.